So get in the shot. Okay. Right. A little further. Okay. So good evening. Um, I'm very excited to be here to share with you about HealPal, where we empower the lives of cancer patients every day. My name is Dr. Sunit Sebastian, and I've been a cancer radiologist for over 10 years with expertise in cancer research, education, and the clinical domains. It would be very safe to assume that each one in this room either knows a family, a friend, or a loved one who has faced cancer in their lives. And the numbers are pretty sobering. One in every two men and one in every three women will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetimes. So when one is diagnosed with cancer, when a patient is diagnosed, they want to know more about their disease. Of course, they are dumped with overwhelming information by their doctors, their caregivers, and are also pointed to Dr. Google, where they get some great information from incredible organizations like the American Cancer Society and the MD Anderson Center. But if you look at the way this is provided, it's very voluminous and it's very difficult to glean critical information that can be used for decision making. HealPal solves this problem and presents patients with simplified content where they can easily glean off information that is valuable for them and take critical decisions about their treatment. This can be ac accessed with every platform on a laptop, on an iPad, or on an iPhone. The other problem that most patients face is that of isolation. Think about when you don't have somebody to talk to or somebody to work with. HealPal wants to solve this problem for cancer patients by matching a cancer patient with his or her peer. We do this by using a unique matching algorithm that is based on 60 unique clinical data points that are entered by the patient into their profile, or we have an automatic screen grabbing technology that populates their profile automatically. Why do we spend so much time on the match? Once a newly diagnosed patient is matched with another patient who probably is further along the disease, they can then connect with each other and share what is called as vital insider information that their doctors and caregivers will not give them, share them information about doctors who have successful treatments and potential clinical trials that they may not know of. There's a great opportunity in the United States that are about 20 million cancer patients in 2016 and literally 2 million cancer patients were new newly diagnosed this year. There is healthy competition in this space, but HealPal is unique. We have a complete solution that incorporates community matching, the matching algorithm, data analytics, and also second opinions. We have gone to market in March of 2016. We have worked with numerous cancer foundations, cancer support groups, the oncology nurse navigators networks, and we have about 2,100 breast cancer patients that are using our platform for education, support, and about exchanging vital information to each other. You must be wondering how we make money. There is a free model for patients where they can, of course, browse the content, get matched, and also get connected to each other. In the premium account, we provide what is called as one data, where we aggregate all the information from various healthcare portals that the patient might have visited to into one form. Think about it like the min.com for healthcare. And we also allow the patient to ask three questions regarding uh, their queries to a cancer expert. We also have a business model with pharmaceutical companies where we get paid about $8,000 for matching each patient to a clinical trial. We have a clear roadmap of where we are going to be for the next quarter, for the next year, as outlined here, and we are raising a round of um, uh, financing. And if you're interested and if you do qualify, I would love to tell you more about it. We would use the money for scaling, for hiring top talent and coding and building partnerships. We have a great team that can pull this off. My co-founder is an expert in healthcare technology, data security, and HIPAA compliance. Wonderful set of advisors with great experience and expertise. In closing, I want to tell you that today you have heard about a technology uh, that greatly impacts the lives of cancer patients and gives them a fighting chance in their cancer journey. Thank you very much. No, I, I like to come to the, this. She's my official skeptic, so I can always no. get the, no, these are great questions. I always, I go straight to her as soon as we start. There you go. Uh -oh. <laughs> 
I have some questions on your premium accounts versus yes. your free accounts. Yes. Um, I'm more so concerned that you'll get stuck in the Dropbox model where everyone's got the free account of Dropbox and you have multiple, not necessarily that you'll have multiple accounts, but how much traction have you gotten on that premium account and do you feel that the value on the extra that you've provided is worth it? Uh, yes, thank you for the question. So we're gonna start the premium account in the uh, first quarter of 2017. So I cannot tell you about traction. Hopefully it'll be good. But the reason why we did that is because there is a blue button initiative that is you know, mandated by the federal government. I don't know how many people know it. It's going to come under uh, meaningful use three, where every healthcare system is mandated to provide their patients with all their data in electronic form on one device. So uh, I think only about 18% of the hospitals in America are ready for it. And uh, what we want to do is be ahead of that curve and provide that data to patients. And I think you must have experienced it yourselves. When you go to a new place, everything gets repeated all over again because people can't pull out your information from different systems. And so we have developed that capability where we can not only pull out the information from different systems, but also make them talk to each other and then organize this data and uh, provide it in a men.com fashion. So we hope that it's gonna be very useful for patients. We hope that we get traction for it. Uh, and then maybe I'll better answer your question when we meet again in let's say March next year. All right, over here. Um, okay. In my experience of caring for a cancer patient, what, what I saw was that many thousands of dollars were spent for expensive cancer drugs which extended the life by maybe 30 days of utmost complete misery. So yes. how are you really helping improve quality of life? for cancer patients. I totally and completely agree with that statement. And as a physician, I would fight every day with my oncologist regarding quality of life. And it is something that we overlook on a daily basis uh, for several reasons. We won't go into the reasons. But what we really intend is that uh, as doctors, we do not give complete information to our patients. And I'm guilty of that too as a physician. Uh, but I think the person that you would really want to know about a particular treatment or a drug is one who has really experienced it, right? And I'm a big believer in quality of life. Uh, I feel that if it's not going to enhance your quality of life, I'd rather accept death, which is the final thing. But I think patients are very true with each other. And by connecting them, I think that information gets across. Because there's no other way. Because if you look at a journal or if you ask a doctor, we are always taught to be upbeat, even when you know, the prognosis is dismal. Uh, that's just the nature of my job. So I think that information can be gleaned not only from other patients who have gone through it, but also the family members who have gone through it themselves. I hope I've answered your question. Um, I love the mission. Um, Thank and you. I, I definitely love the uh, matching segment. That part yes. really resonated. Um, yes. I was a little unclear, maybe just because you went quickly by it, but where you are in your development, where the app is now. Have you actually been able to make matches with people yet? Yes. Um, I think it would be great to have an example of that. But where are you in the development right so now? So we're completely uh, developed. Uh, we have launched in March of 2016. We have 2,100 breast cancer patients using this platform. We have made about 1,700 or so matches. Uh, those matches have resulted in great, thank you. Those matches have resulted in great interactions. And I'll tell you a story just last night uh, that a patient found from another patient about a clinical trial uh, that was not told to her by a physician. She's from Mobile, Alabama, and she wrote to me saying that that information allowed her to not only change her doctor, but also get onto the clinical trial. So I don't know that as a physician, I had such a you know, direct impact on people when I was practicing like this. So this was, this was very heartening to hear, especially from patients. Uh, yeah, if I'm given six minutes, yes. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, quick question on the clinical trials. Are you gonna, uh, sorry, you're saying you're getting paid to recommend those or how does that work? I'm sorry, I'm so totally blinded. Can you please repeat it, I didn't hear. On the clinical trials, you were saying you get paid for those. Are you gonna be like, directly marketing these to people on the website or? No, we are not going to directly market it. What happens is once you're matched and once a clinical trial is suggested to you by a peer because you're exactly matched to him or her, he will say I attended this clinical trial and then we ask the patient whether they would be interested in knowing more about the clinical trial. And we also have an engine that directly matches them based upon their profiles to clinical trials. So we don't market it directly to them. Thank you very much.